all right welcome everyone it's so i'm so happy to see all of you are enjoying this 30 days challenge and um, i see a lot of you you know introducing yourself and joining the challenge from day one day two day three uh, some of you have crossed uh, already completed day 10 so i'm so i'm so impressed okay if you haven't joined the challenge yet you can find the link in the description to join this challenge register yourself you will get an an email after that to confirm your registration and make sure you check your promotion tab and uh, then move you this email to your main primary tab so that you can keep getting the following email in the future as well all right so let's get started but before we get started ahead make sure you subscribe the channel so that you get notified with the new videos every time all right now, this is the Wireshark Challenge TLS Protocol Analysis. TLS, as you know already, it's a transport uh, layer protocol. And TLS is quite important because this is, this is the protocol which makes your internet secure, which makes your communication between you as a user and the websites like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Instagram secure, okay? What do you see at the top? Like when you click, this this is uh, you know uh, an icon here on the left hand side. This says connection is secure. This is all possible because of TLS. Okay, so um, let's uh, understand the challenge first of all. You can see the objective. You will also get a file here as well. You uh, you your job is to analyze the TLS traffic and then uh, run some display filter and share the output in the Discord channel. Okay. So first, let's understand quickly what is TLS and uh, let's quickly understand what is TLS, okay? So you see, TLS is basically a protocol, a transport layer a security. It's basically a cryptography. It's a cryptography protocol, okay? It's a cryptographic protocol that ensures that your communication on the network from client to server is always secure okay and this basically there are three major goal of it first authentication authentication second is achieving the confidentiality confidentiality and third is the integrity okay let's understand this one by one authentication is about uh, internet is is getting you know there are more and more devices coming into the internet it's difficult to uh, you know authenticate which one is uh, genuine which was is the malicious server and everything so in in case of tls the we use something called pki infrastructure okay in pki infrastructure uh, a you a machine which need to be you which you need which need to be authenticated should have a certificate what is that certificate okay a certificate is also digital certificate consists of all the information to verify its identity and this certificate is is assigned by certificate authority like godaddy very sign this large organization okay they whenever you you deploy your own website and you want everybody to see you as a legitimate website you need to have a certificate okay and you can reach out to companies like verisign sectigo uh godaddy and ask for a certificate okay. once you get the certificate now all the user on the internet where well, they start trusting you establish a trust with your user and that's the very very important thing that's the purpose of authentication and that's also avoid any possible man in the middle attack as well right next we have confidentiality confidentiality means your when, when you make sure uh, when you and your server you are talking to your server nobody else can see your data okay so there is no unauthorized access to your communication that's that's the purpose of confidentiality you see when you talk to someone or when you initiate a call with someone on the whatsapp you see end-to-end -end encrypted right that means only you and the other person on the other side can only see the data 
right? That, that's the purpose. That means you have 100% confidentiality because it's end-to-end -end encrypted. So nobody else can come into it. It's establish a sort of a tunnel, right? So that's that's how you achieve confidentiality with TLS because of encryption, because TLS provides the encryption. TLS provides the digital certificate. Remember this. It's because of digital certificates, you have authentication. It's because of encryption, encryption, you have confidentiality. Again, integrity means there's no unauthorized modification in the data. Let's say you, you are here, right? And this is Google server, right? So you send something to google.com and Google send something to you, right? There is a sort of a hashing mechanism. It, it, it makes sure that uh, whenever something changes, the hash value changes as well. And uh, you see the value is you see the data as invalid, right? So that's possible because that's because it's all encrypted. Nobody else can see the data. And that's how you make sure because nobody can see the data, they won't be able to modify it as well, right? So that's how you achieve a better level of integrity, okay? So now let's talk about uh, let's talk about one more quick thing here. Let's understand uh, uh, the TLS handshake. Okay, give me one second and um, let's talk about this. So what happened is once your SS once your uh, TCP handshake, right? If you remember in the earlier conversation, we had a word on, word on it. Whenever a system or a client want to talk to a server, let's say it's a google.com, they start with something called TCP communication. TCP is connection oriented. That means before you can start exchanging some data, you have to establish a session. So it's in this SYN packet, you get a CNAC, SYN and ACK, and finally your computer send the ACK means acknowledgement then there is something called ssl handshake or tls handshake okay it is used interchangeably i mean ssl is an outdated protocol but still it is being used because it's it's, it's uh you know it, both of them are used uh interchangeably so when i say ssl it means tls in a way okay so what happened is once your tcp3 handshake is done your client machine send the client hellos which saying that these are different cipher suit, cipher suite and uh, protocol version encryption uh, that I support. Ciphers means the encryption suite. And um, I, I support this, I support this, I support this kind of encryption methodology, protocol and standards as well. Then your server also, uh, server receive that and the server also share its own hellos with all the detail uh, cipher suite that is you know that the server is comfortable with random number session id and everything once the ssl hello is done about which protocol encryption protocol session id and other random number i'm comfortable with that step is done these are majorly three messages four messages i guess yes and next be the client key generation message happen where it encrypt a uh, pre-master secret so pre-master secret is basically used to generate a master key, which then used to derive a session key, which then finally be used for encrypting and decrypting your actual data, actual payload. Let's say you want to send hi to google.com. Maybe let's say you want to send an email or access a Gmail. In those situations, a session key will be used to encrypt the data and decrypt it. But in order to generate the session key, you have to have master key. And in order to have master key, you have to have pre-master key generation, right? So pre-master key will be generated and the key, actual key will be generated and the cipher specification will be initialized. And finally, we have the session key. Once we have the session key, we then can have actual application data and we can encrypt the data with the session key. We'll send it to the server it will decrypt it and it will then send the actual data as well remember this is where we use something called asymmetric asymmetric algorithm because uh, a key encryption uh, basically because we use a different key for encryption and decryption okay this is where we have a pair of key we use private key and we have public key on both the side server and client side 
private key is used to be kept i mean it's meant to be kept private public key is used to be is used to share with others right so if i want to verify the server identity i can verify by the public key but if i want to decrypt my own message i'll decrypt it by the uh, private key itself so let's say for example the client is here right this is client and this is server okay now what can what can happen is i can uh, the server can actually uh, maybe let's say uh, the client can actually send the data to the server and uh, this way it can use the server public key i'm just giving an example it can use the server public key to encrypt the data okay once it reaches to the server server has its own private key now server can decrypt the data by using its own private key because it's a part of same pair right and remember public key is, is already shared with everyone so once a client encrypt the data with the server uh, server's own public key once it reaches to the server server can see the data by decrypting it with its own uh, private key i hope this was clear so just give, just to give you an idea uh, your public key is like your email address you shared with others right you share with your friends your business partner client to send you a requirement to send you an invoice and all those stuff right but private key is like your password your private key sorry private key is like your email password you never share with anybody right so you share with others to send your data just like uh, anybody can send your data using your private key they can encrypt the data by your private key by your public key sorry once it reaches to you now you have to open your email right someone send you an email you get notified now you have to open it now in order to open that you need a password and that's password as private key the similar thing happened with the server as well someone send you a message by encrypting it now once it reaches to you you have to see the data and to see the data you need a pub private key and that's how the public and private key is used and that's what we call asymmetric key encryption all right so i hope this was clear for everyone if you still have any question you can ask me in the comment section below um so i hope you can complete this challenge on time and share me the output as well catch you later